All right, so quick review on this. This is a thermal imaging camera. And every day when I'm sitting here at my desk, I feel this huge draft of cold air hitting my legs. Like my feet will be freezing. That's actually an image of under my desk. But um, anyway, so I bought this thermal imaging camera, um, which has other uses outside of what I'm using it for now. But I was first introduced with thermal imaging cameras in a search and rescue class. Um, one of the items they had there was a FLIR thermal imaging camera used to find missing uh, people. However, at like the distances we were looking for missing people, they may not necessarily be that great. But I did like how out in the woods you could see the temperature difference. Um, and pretty much anything you sh shine this at. The really sad part is, is that my camera is not really, I mean, I got to get pretty close to it for you to be able to see like what I see. So I've got a bunch of images I'll put up, but so basically you shine it at something or you point it at something and it shows you the temperature range, which is dark is the coldest temperature and bright is the warmer temperature. And it is saying that in this image, the temperature range is from 49.5 all the way up to 76.3. I'm standing inside my house. What it's actually seeing is the cold air coming in around a patio door that's over there. And there's some really cool stuff that I found out walking around my house looking at. Let me show you another one. So now we are where my front door is at. You can actually see since that I first put this up here, I actually stuck a towel along the bottom of the door because there was so much cold air coming in through the bottom of the door. But look at this. All the way around where that window's at, kind of the same deal. That's the window in my front storm door. Just cold air, just bleeding around it. But the one that was even more surprising, look right there where like your doorknob is at. No reason for it to have air coming around there. Really all the way around the door. This is a relatively new door. I just, I just put it in. I don't know, three years ago I think. It was before I got cancer. If you look down around the bottom of every single wall in this house, look at that right there. You know what causes that? Not having insulation on your, uh, I don't forgot what it's called now, the part where your like joist attaches to the outside wall. That's what causes that. There are places too like if you look at this wall right here, you see that streak going all the way up toward the ceiling? You know what causes that? Missing insulation in that wall. There's like so much stuff. Look at that up in the corner. Kind of the same deal. Insulation it's missing in the ceiling. Insulation right there where the wall meets, the exterior wall meets the ceiling. You walk into the bathroom. Look at all that cold air coming in around the toilet. Of course, the water is a different temperature than, you know, the toilet itself. But look at all that cold air coming in around the toilet. There is so much stuff, problems in this house. Look right there. Another exterior wall that's probably got missing insulation or something in the wall. I don't know if you can see it in, I'm trying to get in closer. You can literally see the studs going up the wall right there. 
and the and the temperature transfer from the exterior wall to the inside of the wall. Can you see them two vertical dark spots? That's where the studs are at in the wall. And what they're doing is they're actually transferring cold air through, I guess that would be conduction, from the outside wall to the inside wall. No insulation in the world is going to fix that. It just don't have a, a barrier between the outside cold air and the inside. So it just transfers. Like the cold air just walks across the wood through the wall. Now if you know anything about my house, my house is kind of sort of like three stories. Well technically it's two and a half. So it has an open ceiling. Look right there. That's up actually in the exterior ceiling of my living room. That great big black spot right there. Look right there in that corner. These are all places that cold air is collecting. There's insulation missing there. You can literally go all the way around this house. So the downstairs of my house has all of those windows across there. You kind of expect them to be cooler. I'm actually kind of surprised it's not way worse than what it is. But like these other areas, when I start moving up toward the ceiling, heat rises. That's nearly all the way up. That's a whole area right there that's got insulation missing or something. Somehow a lot of cold air is coming in that corner where those two walls meet. I have to figure out what it is. I don't know what it is. See, if I remove, you won't be able to see it. Anyways... I've been basically walking around my house looking at all this stuff trying to figure out like where am I going to get the most bang for the buck. Obviously that storm window right there or that uh, sliding glass door that leads outside just cold air is just coming in all around it. Now this is actually a room that I keep closed off but the only thing that's really closing it off is I have a double set of drapes. This is a great big huge door way right here. It's probably, I don't know, eight feet by eight feet. It's probably eight feet by eight feet. Now when we put this up here, you can see at the top, and then you follow it down. See all that dark blue? That's cold air. All the way around it. I keep this room actually closed off. It's my weight lifting room. Let me turn the light on and we'll go inside. So I keep this room closed off because I don't want it. I don't actually want to heat this room. I actually like it cold in there when I'm working out. So I keep this room closed off. Like when you come up here though, there's a huge te temperature difference between one of the things I wanted to show you about this is where the camera lenses are at. You kind of see it's got that like groove around it and that's because it rotates. It'll rotate all the way up full 90 degrees. Now that would be useful if you were in a tight like crawl space, those like older crawl spaces that are only like, you know, a couple of feet deep and you got to crawl around under your basement so that you could, you know, have the phone, have the screen up like this while you're scanning the ceiling or however you wanted to do it. But anyways, so I had this hooked up. I use Linux operating system. It has a USB-C port here on the end. I plugged the USB-C port into it, turned this on, it Im immediately popped open. Um, it has a 16 gig storage card inside of it. I think it also does videos. I never tried the video, but um, it's a touch screen. So basically there's some icons down there. One of the icons is a camera. You select the camera icon. There's some other icons that, put, that comes up. 
one of them looks like a shutter you press it and then it pops up and says where do you want to save this image to very simple to use but with this it's really going to allow me to really focus in on fixing all these drafts and leaks in this house you know this is an older house it was built in 1974 and it was built as a vacation home so maybe they didn't put as much effort into insulating it and that sort of thing since they only intended to be here in the summertime anyways hope you enjoyed this video if this is something you think you can use to help you i can't remember exactly what it cost it wasn't the cheapest one but it wasn't the most expensive and uh, i think it's well worth what it paid because let's put it this way if i fix one or two or three things that i found wrong it'll pay for the cost of that in in heating and cooling savings for one year so paid for itself already i just got it literally out of the mailbox today